Welcome back to The Bottom Line. I am joined by Chase Ingram, and we are talking about the potential 2020 CrossFit Games. I know, fingers crossed. There's just been so much going on lately. We've seen so many changes. We thought they were going to be in August. They've been pushed back to September. California opened. California shut down again. Um, And yet, Dave Castro is posting on Instagram about games athletes out at the ranch testing events. So, Chase, what does it all mean? I don't know. (laughs) Um, I have hopes. I have fears. Um, You know, my emotions are all over the place. And the big thing is, the thing we know from Dave is that number one is that they want to put on the CrossFit Games for the CrossFit community and for the Games athletes. At the same time, and I think this is an unfair criticism of Dave and CrossFit HQ, is that they're not going to do it at the expense of the health and safety of the athletes. I, 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 they preach that a lot. I think people just automatically assume is like they just want to put on a show for money. And I don't think they understand it's like how little money actually is going into <laughs> what's going to try to take place in its current form. So it's not about that. It's not about um, using the athletes for their own um, advantage. It's like Dave really, truly is doing everything he can to make the games happen this year you know i put that in quotations is it's just it's different this year there's an asterisk already you know we don't have the teenagers we don't have the age groups we don't have the teams we have a limited field um but it's back at aromas in the, the, the heartland or the mecca of the crossfit games and you know i want to see the crossfit games i love i love the crossfit games it's the thing that like drew me into the sport and the community and, and now i have this like I don't this weird tie, like this soul binding tie to to (laughs) the competition. It's just so much fun. And it's just beyond people working out really fast. So Dave is one of those that, you know, Dave doesn't quit Mm -hmm. unless he's, you know, knocked out unconscious and body bagged and shipped off somewhere. Like Dave is going to do everything he can to put it on. Um, But again, not at the expense of the athletes and and their health and safety. So, the problem is, is that there's a lot of things out of his control that are making it more and more difficult for this to be a thing. Right, exactly. I feel like you're right in terms of his emotional dedication, his logistical dedication. I am sure that they are doing absolutely everything in their power. I mean, we saw a while ago that they had even filed a permit with the state and and you know may have been reconfiguring the layout, like just doing anything and everything that they needed to do to ensure that it was number one, possible, and number two, safe for the athletes. But logistically speaking, I mean, when California was on the verge of reopening or going into phase one, whatever it's called, things were looking pretty good. It was like, okay, maybe we can really do this. They're thinking about the number of people they can have at a time. They're thinking about how they shuttle folks back and forth so that they're not interacting with anyone else so that we don't have a thousand people on the grounds at one time. But with the resurgence of the coronavirus and with California being in a space where they're thinking about, you know, closing things down and gyms are shutting down and and maybe groups of people are, the numbers is shrinking. Logistically, I'm worried that it might not be able to happen again. I want it to, but I I don't know. And that's the thing is like, you know, we can, we can speculate whether we want it to happen or not want it to happen. Is it going to happen or not? And there's just, there's things out of our hands and out of Dave's hands um, that could potentially completely shut it down. Um, I honestly think is like, if they even whittle it down is, is, you know, they're like only five people can be in a spot the one time. It's like, I bet Dan, Dave would put five athletes out on the floor with judges behind like video cams in their lanes to try to make this happen. Like <laughs> totally. whatever it takes with the confines that they're given to try to make this happen. Um, I think early on, and this kind of goes to the, the change of ownership too. And Dave's role is that the one thing that concerned me early on was that when Dave was appointed CEO and still trying to make the games work on top of trying to fix everything that they needed to fix in CrossFit HQ, that had more concern for me because I felt that that almost wasn't a necessary thing for the CEO of CrossFit to be involved in. Hmm. And now that he's kind of got the role back as the director of the CrossFit Games, I'm even more excited to have Dave really involved and hands deep in trying to make this happen now that, you know, Eric is coming on board to take over 
kind of the CEO of CrossFit position and trying to fix what, what's needed to be fixed at the CrossFit HQ level. So I think some people also need to see the difference of the titles and the job that Dave currently has, which that was what, two, was it two or three weeks ago? Um, now that he's back as the director of the CrossFit game. So that, again, that's one positive thing I see in Dave's new role or new old role. New old role again. Yes. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And, and by the way, if he were to come up with some zany, like two people on the floor at a time and judges, you know, watching from, I don't know, like cameras that are up in the air, suspended on the mountain, I don't care. I would watch it. I oh, would, yeah. because I'm with you. I think it's, it, it lives in my heart and soul. I want to see the fittest people on earth or a portion of the fittest people on earth or whatever out on the floor. And, and Dave is just so, I mean, he's like just so interesting the way his brain works and the, the types of tests he put together constantly, they, they continue to shock and amaze me. I really, really like the games. I want them to happen. I, do. I, I want them to happen too. And again, I know Dave is going to do everything he can to do it to get it done, get it done the right way, safe way, the appropriate way. Um, but there's just a lot of things outside of his control um, that are kind of derailing the chances of this happening, at least in a, I mean, it's not in the sense that we've seen over the last seven to 10 years, um, now that it's limited, but any semblance of what a normal competition would look like. But there's a lot of avenues they can go down. We saw what the Rogue Invitational did mm -hmm. just a, a few weeks ago. So that might be an option. Um, obviously, I'm not going to tell Dave what to do. I'm just <laughs> saying there, there are a lot of different options to make this happen, to give the community what they love to see and they love to be a part of. And I think it goes to show us how the games can affect everything else in a certain way within our community in a positive way. Um, and, I, and I know Dave doesn't want to give up on that. Given the uncertainty of getting the games off the ground in the next few weeks here, do you think it still makes sense to continue with the uh, athlete testing? And, and in what way does that help shape what we see on the floor? While they're on site in terms of the testing or? Like right now, the fact that athletes recently in the last couple of days have been out at the ranch testing this game's programming. Oh, that, yeah, I thought you meant COVID testing, sorry. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> a whole other suite of, I guess you can't say testing in 2020 without. <laughs> Keep, keep testing. Um, yeah. So for the event testing, yes. I mean, until he gets a, this isn't going to happen. And I even think if he did get that, he'd be like, well, I don't, I'm still going to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. It's like test. He's just going to go on. Like nothing's changing. Like the, like it's going to happen. So seeing the athletes out there testing the events have got like that, those incitement exciting jitters all back for me again, you know, seeing the posts on Instagram and maybe we'll start getting event clues here in a couple of weeks. And all of that is necessary and needed because, you know, Dave's not going to throw out a half-assed competition. You know, if you, if you read his book, Constructing the CrossFit Games, how much detail and effort he puts into every single event, every single event at the CrossFit Games with testing, retesting, reprogramming, retesting again. You know, that is part of Dave's process to make sure that these events are, um, you know, appropriate, fun and exciting to watch, fun and exciting to do, a good test overall for fitness to find. Again, the end goal is to find the fittest person on earth. And those are necessary steps to do is, is testing the events, especially testing them on site. So what's the bottom line here? I mean, is it happening? Do we hope it's happening? Do we just not have enough information? The, the bottom line is... All of those is a yes. <laughs> All of those things. You want it to happen, yes. I love the CrossFit Games. It's, it's just, again, like it's ingrained in what I love about the sport of CrossFit and the community of CrossFit and, and how that all ties together and brings us together as between sport and methodology. Is it going to happen? I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, but like I said before, is like I could totally see California saying no and, and Dave still saying yes. Mm -hmm. uh, what athletes will be there will be different, but we could see 30 men and 30 women competing at the ranch in Aromas for the title of fittest on earth in 2020. We could see that. I'm going to go out on a limb and say the bottom line for me is that it's happening. I'm going to remain optimistic. I don't know in what capacity, like you said, Rogue Invitational did something really interesting. I would not put it past Dave Castro to come up with some way, whether it's via video, something we haven't even thought of yet, two people on the floor at a time, like whatever it may be. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's happening, or at least I'm keeping all my fingers and toes crossed uh, that it's happening. I think enough positive mantra, you might be able to will it to happen.
Hopefully, hopefully. Well, Chase, thanks so much for joining us on The Bottom Line and we'll catch you guys next time.